to first year undergraduate microeconomics. We've spent the last few presentations talking about externalities. In this presentation, we're going to address one of the issues that tends to confuse students, but is actually really, really easy. We're going to consider the question, does it matter if an externality is considered on the demand side or the supply side of the market? Let's start off by thinking about the negative externality created when we produce and consume electricity. So far, we've considered that on the supply side of the market. In other words, we've considered that there's an extra marginal cost, extra pollution cost, associated with the production of electricity. So that our supply curve, which is the marginal private cost, is less than the marginal social cost, and that difference is the marginal external cost. But it's not obvious that that's the right way to think about it. After all, if you didn't turn on the lights, flick on the television, or switch on the air conditioner on a hot day, then the generators wouldn't be producing electricity and creating pollution. So is the pollution caused by the supply of electricity or the demand for electricity? That's a tough one, but the really nice thing is, it doesn't matter. You get exactly the same results if instead of thinking of the external cost of pollution as an extra cost, if we think about pollution as being a negative value. In other words, we can put it on the demand side, and we can think of the marginal social value of electricity as being the marginal private value less the marginal external cost due to the pollution. We can separate out marginal private value from marginal social value. And we're going to see that if we do that, we get all the same results. So while we could have lots of philosophical debates about who's to blame for pollution, the consumers or the producers, economically it doesn't matter diagram we've been using so far. We're going to have the pollution externality on the supply side. We're going to have our downward sloping demand curve which is both marginal private value and marginal social value. We're going to have our supply curve, the upward sloping green line, which is also going to be our marginal private cost. And because we're putting the externality on the supply side, we're going to have a separate marginal social cost curve where the gap between the supply curve and the marginal social cost curve is going to be the marginal cost of the pollution externality. It's the difference between the marginal private cost of a generator and the marginal social cost to society. It's got the extra cost of the pollution. And we know that our market outcome is going to be where the demand curve and the supply curve intersect at this point here, which gives us our market quantity and our market price. And we know that the socially optimal quantity is going to be where the marginal social cost curve intersects the marginal social value curve. That's going to be back here at Q star, back to the left of Q market the market overproduces. Notice that at this optimal quantity Q star, there's a gap between the demand curve and the supply curve. And that gap, that distance here, is exactly equal to the marginal cost of the externality at the socially optimal quantity. That's why we could use a Pigouvian tax to fix the externality by setting our tax exactly equal to that marginal social cost of the externality at Q star. Now let's consider it from the other perspective. Let's suppose that we consider the marginal externality, the marginal pollution cost, as being a negative value, as something that reduces the value to society of consuming electricity. Notice 
that this doesn't change our supply curve. The supply curve is exactly where it was before. The supply curve just tells us for any price how much electricity in total electricity generators wish to produce and sell. That hasn't changed. The change is that our upward sloping supply curve is now both the marginal private cost curve and also the marginal social cost curve because we're putting the externality on the consumption side. So now there is no divergence between marginal private cost and marginal social cost. And similarly, there's no change in our demand curve. The demand curve just tells us, given the price, how much electricity do consumers in total wish to buy. That hasn't changed. The difference is that now our downward sloping demand curve, well, it's still the marginal private value curve, but it's no longer the marginal social value curve. The marginal social value curve now lies below the demand curve or the marginal private value curve. Why? Well, because now we've got to subtract the marginal cost of the pollution externality off the marginal private value to get our marginal social value. Remember, we're considering the marginal externality cost as being negative value. So it reduces the height of the marginal value curve. So what's changed? Well, first note that as supply and demand haven't changed, we know our market outcome hasn't changed. We still get the same prediction for the price and the quantity in our perfectly competitive market outcome. Nothing changed there. What about in terms of Q star? Well, it's pretty easy to see that marginal social value and marginal social cost still intersect at exactly the same quantity, Q star. And the gap between demand and supply at that Q star hasn't changed either. So that means that our Pigouvian tax to fix the externality will be exactly the same as before. The market still overproduces compared to the social optimum, we still get the same Pigouvian tax. Nothing has changed when we put the externality on the demand side rather than the supply side. What about for our positive externality? Here's our diagram that we've been using. We've got the supply curve, the upward sloping green line, which is also the marginal private cost curve and the marginal social cost curve because we've put the positive externality on the demand side. And we have our downward sloping demand curve, the dotted green line, and that's our marginal private value curve. However, our marginal social value curve lies above the demand curve. It's a solid green line. Why does it lie above the demand curve? Because it includes 20 cents extra marginal value created by an extra squirt of deodorant. It includes a positive externality. That gives us our market outcome where demand and supply intersect at three squirts per day and our socially optimal outcome at 3.4 squirts a day where marginal social value equals marginal social cost. Now, what about if we flip it around? What if we think about the positive externality to Sam's co-workers when he uses an extra squirt of deodorant, what about if we think about that as being a reduction in the social costs of producing and consuming deodorant? What about if we think about it on the supply side? How does that change our analysis? Well, our downward sloping demand curve hasn't changed. It's now the solid green line. But demand is not just marginal private value now, it's also marginal social value. And our upward sloping supply curve, which is now the dotted green line, it hasn't changed. The difference is that the supply curve, well, it's still the marginal private cost curve, but it's no longer the marginal social cost curve. The marginal social cost curve is the lower solid green line. The marginal social cost is less than the marginal private cost. The difference between the two is the positive externality. It's the 20 cents 
of reduced social cost associated with the externality when Sam uses an extra squirt of deodorant. Now, what's changed? Well, because demand and supply haven't changed, we still have them crossing at the same point, the same market price, the same market quantity of three units. Further, the marginal social value curve and the marginal social cost curve, well, they still intersect at exactly the same quantity, 3.4. And the gap between demand and supply at that point, well, it's still exactly the same, exactly 20 cents, exactly as before. So again, nothing has changed. The market still underproduces by the exact same amount, the Pigouvian subsidy to fix the positive externality is exactly the same. There is no change. It doesn't matter whether we consider the positive externality from Sam using deodorant as an increase in value or a decrease in cost. So now we can answer our question, does it matter if an externality is considered on the demand side or the supply side of the market? No. It makes no difference whatsoever. You can think about it whichever way is convenient for you. Students sometimes get worried about this result. If it doesn't matter which side of the market we put the externality on, how do we know which one to do? Well, the answer is because it doesn't matter, it's up to you. Choose whichever is convenient for you. In general, I tend to put negative externalities on the supply side because I think of them as cost. And I put positive externalities on the demand side because I think of them as a value. But if you prefer, you can do the opposite. And sometimes it will depend on the question. Sometimes a question is easier to answer one way than the other way. But it's your choice. See you next time.